Okay, next we're going to talk about Florida's Condominium Act, which is under Chapter 718. Uh, specifically, that's a very, very long act, and there's a lot of provisions that we're not going to talk about here today, which are beyond the scope of this discussion. But one thing I do want to talk about is remedy that's available um, if you're dealing with condominiums here in Florida. And um, under 718.203, subsection 1 and subsection 2, there are implied warranties that are provided by statute. And 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 uh, and you're typically dealing with the purchasers of condominiums that will will invoke these. Uh, and under subsection one, the developer grants to the purchasers a warranty of fitness and merchantability for the purposes or uses intended. Again, that's seven eighteen point two zero three subsection one. And uh, there's a little more detail in the statute, but uh, generally. There is a three-year warranty for the unit and all improvements. There is a three-year warranty for roof, structural, mechanical, electrical, and the uh, plumbing elements. Uh, and except mechanical elements, uh, mechanical being uh, you know HVAC, uh, heating, ventilation, air conditioning. So uh, if there's a HVAC or mechanical system that serves only one unit, then the warranty would not apply to that specific unit. And these warranties run from the completion of construction. And that is either the issuance of a certificate of occupancy or substantial completion. Uh, some jurisdictions, I have to assume that, like Florida, uh, their uh, building department will issue a final certificate of occupancy or CO so that you know the building is complete. Um, but uh, under the statute, it runs from either that or in the absence of that, the date of substantial completion. And here in Florida, that's defined in, a lot of times it's defined in your contract, but that's generally take it from case law, and that's where the, the, uh, the building of the project can be used for its intended purposes by an owner. That's when you have reached substantial completion, so that is a milestone in construction here in Florida, and I have to assume else, you know, elsewhere around the country. There's also a warranty for personal property for the life of a manufacturer's warranty uh, that can be invoked by a purchaser against the developer. And a fallback one year on all other property that is conveyed with the unit, and that particular one only applies to initial purchasers only. The other ones that I mentioned apply to subsequent purchasers. This specific one only runs in favor of initial purchasers only, and that runs from the date of closing, not from uh, the date of uh, completion of construction like the other warranties. This actually runs from the date of closing. Now, these warranties are conditioned upon routine maintenance. I have yet to see a, a lawsuit against a developer that I was involved with that the developer failed to raise as a defense. It's almost like an obligatory uh, knee-jerk reaction. They always put the condominium association failed to do routine maintenance. Now, having represented condominium associations, I can tell you that there's a good chance that they may have failed to do routine maintenance, but we're going to talk a little bit about whether or not that may, in fact, negate an otherwise available remedy under um, under the Condominium Act. Um, but uh, again, these are conditioned upon routine maintenance being done by the uh, association. And so you hope that that uh, turnover board <laughs> that uh, is in place once a developer turns over has the wherewithal to, uh, you know, engage the right vendors that will come out and do, you know, annual routine inspections and, and maintain the property. Because if you let the property go to hell and you don't do maintenance, then then developer may have a legitimate defense here, and that would negate an otherwise available remedy. Okay, so that was under um, th that was the uh, one I discussed was by the developer, but also the contractor, subcontractor, and all suppliers grant to the developer. Uh, and to the purchaser of each unit, imply warranties of fitness as to the work performed or material supplied. Now, if, if, if you recall, the warranty from the developer is um, merchantability as well. This warranty that is by the contractor, subcontractor, suppliers is only a warranty of fitness as to the work performed or materials supplied by them. And, and, it, and it, also, it allows the developer to invoke these remedies. So if a developer is named in a lawsuit, for reaching these warranties that are provided to the, you know, to the purchasers or to the condominium associations that will, you know, uh, implement these 
these lawsuits on behalf of, of the unit owners, the developer can cross claim against the contra you know the, the, the contractor that it hired uh, and and of course the contractor um, excuse me can cross claim against the contractor or the subcontractor supplier and also bring a claim for breach of warranty against those. Now a manufacturer of a product may or may not be considered a quote supplier providing implied warranty. Now the, the statute does not mention manufacturer, it specifically talks about a supplier. And most of the time, you know, what happens is you'll have uh, you know in the in the chain of construction, you'll have a a subcontractor that will purchase materials from a, a a supplier. Of course, the supplier gets it from either the manufacturer, director. There may be someone else in the stream of commerce in between that. Uh, but the, the supplier that actually sells that to the subcontractor or to the contractor it is the supplier. So the manufacturer is not going to be deemed a supplier under the statute in that instance. And, and I've cited to the Harbor Landing Condominium Association versus Harbor Landing LLC. Um, and we can we can assume the LLC was the developer in that case. Uh, but if the manufacturer does happen to sell direct to a developer, which I guess stranger things have happened, I I've not seen it, but uh, but they could then fall into the definition of supplier. So uh, what are the warranties that the contractor, subcontractor, and suppliers grant to the developer and the purchaser? It is three years for the roof, structural, mechanical, and plumbing elements. Again, except for mechanical or, or HVAC, as I like to call it, elements serving only one unit and one year as to all other improvements and materials. Now, if if you go back to the slide we looked at, the developer grants much broader remedies um, to uh, to to purchasers. However, uh, and it's merchantability and fitness. Whereas here, the contractor, subcontractor, suppliers um, only grants uh, a warranty of fitness, and it's for the limited. Uh, elements that I mentioned, roof, structural, mechanical, plumbing, uh, for three years. And just like with the ones we saw with the developer, those run from completion of construction, which again is the issuance of a certificate of occupancy or in the absence of that, substantial completion. In order to comply with their statutory warranty, the, the contractor or subcontractor, um, the, the materials um, and the work that they provide must conform with generally accepted standards of workmanship and performance of similar work and materials meeting the requirements that are specified in the contract. And uh, that's under the leisure resorts in case that I cited the materials. And uh, just like we saw with the, the warranties from the developer, these are also conditioned upon routine maintenance. And I mentioned that the lack of routine maintenance may not provide a defense uh, to uh, a, a developer uh, or, or, you know, or a contractor in this case. Uh, and, and I've cited the Strocine versus Harbor Hall Inlet 2 Condominium Association um, in case. And there, the developer was deemed to breach its implied warranty of fitness where there was cracks in a tennis court. And the court there found that even though the association really was not up on its routine maintenance, that the cracks appear because of uh, improper soil conditions underneath the court. Um, and uh, those resulted in improper drainage and inadequate foundation. So even though there the association didn't do routine maintenance, the court looked behind that defense and said, well, wait a minute, they may not have done routine maintenance, but we really don't think there's a causal link between them not doing the maintenance um, and, and the uh, particular defect in that case. Also under Chapter 718, 618, and that's, uh, that's referred to as uh, the Roth Act, that deals with con condominium conversions. What I just talked about initially deals with new construction or new condominiums, and 718, 618 deals with converted properties. So when, we had quite a bit of that right <laughs> during the boom years uh, where people, uh, you know, purchased these apartment complex and then converted them into condominiums, made a fortune, and uh, and then got out just in time before the market collapsed. Um, but where they have taken uh, um, a non-condominium project and converted it into one, 6, 8, uh, 718, 618 will provide similar warranties just like we uh, just like we just talked about. <clears throat> 